So what has caught your eye? I gotta believe the catcher is catching your eye. Yeah, I mean Adley Rushman has caught my eye. Opening day for Adley Rushman, going five for five with a homer, Fenway Park. I mean, when you have an opening day like that, you remember it. I remember one of the, one of my opening days, I hit a homer, and like I'll never forget that. He'll never forget this day, going five for five. And and credit to him too. He hits the homer early in that in that game. And just stays within himself and takes what the pitcher's giving him, serving base hits into the left field. He's got a sweet swing. And I'm talking to, to Brandon Hyde in the, in, in the offseason about this kid when he came up, like he, you know, just oozed confidence and it rubbed off on, on, on the rest of that team. And the Orioles have kind of taken off since he's been there. The way he, he handles a pitching staff, he's very good defensively, works on his craft, and the guy can mash. Yeah, look, Alex, he really has a fondness for catchers. And pitchers, because you worked yeah. with pitchers every single yeah. day. So uh, I have to assume there's a pitcher that is also catching your eye right now. Who is it? Well, I wanted to see Kodai Sengai pitch because, I mean, he came into the season with, you know, a lot of fanfare coming over from Japan, especially with that, go that, that ghost fork ball. You see that there in his glove. But look at these swings from the Marlin hitters in, that in, that, in, that, in his first game. I mean, look at, look at this. And I want, you, I want to point out to Nid uh, Niddle behind the plate. Look at his reaction trying to catch that ball. He's going down to his knees to block it, but at the same time, he's catching in the air. He's not really sure if, he's, if he can catch it or block it at that point. And I've been there where the pitch is so nasty, you have so much movement on it. Sometimes it stays up a little bit, sometimes it drops off the table, and you gotta be ready to block. And you're not really sure yet what to do. And he's going down to a knee and still having to catch it in, in the air. I mean, it. it that pitch was nasty, and it, and it actually it impressed me a lot. There's not many pitches like that have that kind of movement. So it's as advertised. We heard about this ghost Absolutely. fork ball, and you were really that impressed. Yeah, it looks. I mean, the, the fork ball. It's a tough pitch to throw, and it kind of has it kind of knuckles a little bit. So it has that uh, a little bit of a knuckleball factor. But at 85, 86 miles an hour. I mean, it's tough to catch and even tougher to hit. He had so many weapons on the mound. He could have gone to any pitch he wanted to. He looked really good. Uh, one weapon that Senga does not have, even though his last name is Senga, he can't really sing. Maybe he can, but there was a certain pitcher that caught your eye that can't sing. Look, I was watching this game, and then it, and I was watching like the the, uh, the the pregame ceremonies, and when Adam Wainwright stepped away from the from the from the line to go to go sing the national anthem. Let's listen in a little bit. The stones you gotta have to be able to pull that off. <laughs> I mean, for as baseball players, when we're on a baseball field, like there, there's nothing really for us to be nervous about. That's what we feel comfortable. But to go in a situation like that, where you're now having to sing in front of 40,000 people, not play baseball, do something you know how to do, but to sing and nail it like the way he does, my my jaw was dropped. He's otherworldly. Uh, he will eventually be on television.